Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, we continue talking about um, distributions of uh, random variables. This lecture is part of the advanced mathematics course for uh, teenagers, for high school students primarily, which is presented on unizor.com and that's where I suggest you to um, uh, watch this particular lecture because the site contains uh, notes to this lecture which basically is like a textbook. You, you can read it in parallel or just independently from listening to this lecture. Um, and, uh, and then there are certain exercises and, and exams actually uh, on this website. So this is the source of all this entire course. All right, so let's get back to uh, distributions. We are talking about binary distributions um, in this lecture. And um, I will just devote some time defining what exactly we mean when we are talking about binary distributions. So this lecture is like an introduction, um, primarily the definitions um, of binary distributions. Now, um, as the name implies, binary distributions are related to certain things which have only two different um, possible values. Um, imagine the experiment which has only two results, like uh, you toss the coin, for instance, um, and it can be either heads or tails. So you have some experiment where the result is success or failure, or yes or no, or, or any other binary kind of an experiment. So all these binary distributions are related to experiments with uh, just two different possible um, results. Now, um, the experiment can be a single experiment uh, or we can consider multiple experiments, um, each of them having this uh, binary uh, characteristics. So, um, the single ones, the single experiment um, is usually called um, Bernoulli experiment or Bernoulli trial. Um, um, Bernoulli was a Swiss mathematician of 17th century and he was the first actually who, who um, researched this type of um, uh, uh, probabilities and uh, random distributions. So, um, we are talking about single experiment with two results which we can conditionally call success or failure. And uh, the results have certain probabilities. For instance, the results of success is P, and the probability of failure is equal to Q, which is 1 minus P. So there are only two possibilities, and that's why this particular probability should be 1 minus p, so the sum of them is equal to uh, 1, where p obviously is greater or equal to 0. Now, if it's, let's say, a coin tossing, then usually if it's an ideal coin, the probability p is equal to 1 half and the probability q is 1 half. So 1 half uh, is the probability of tails and 1 half is the probability of heads. Now, well, what does it mean actually that the probability of success is equal to P of that particular experiment? Well, it means that if we will repeat this experiment again and again under exactly the same condition and all our um, sequential experiments are exactly identical to each other and independent of each other, then um, if you have, let's say, N experiments conducted, then approximately the number of um, successes will be p times n, approximately. And the more uh, experiments we conduct, so the larger the number n is, um, the closer, let's say, the number of successes 
divided by the number of experiments will be closer to P. And as the number of experiments goes to infinity, this ratio will be closer and closer to P. So the limit of this as the number of experiments goes to infinity should be equal to P. So that's what it means, basically, that the, the probability is equal to P. Okay, <coughs> so we are talking about Bernoulli experiment. Well, at the same time, we can um, define a Bernoulli random variable, which basically is probably the, the simplest random variable. Let's call it C. Now, the random variable, you know, it's a numerical function defined on elementary events. We have two elementary events, success and failure, and we define the value of uh, this random variable on one uh, elementary event to be equal to one, and the probability is equal to p. Uh, and obviously the value of random variable on the failure we define as being equal to zero and the probability of our random variable to be equal to zero is is q which is equal to one minus p so we can talk about Bernoulli trials or experiments or we can talk about Bernoulli random variables uh, which has two different values with probabilities of uh, P and Q. Okay, um, now, um, as an example, I was saying, you can consider, for instance, coin tossing. Um, what else? Um, well, if you will um, consider that the result, result of Bernoulli trial is trial number trial number K is event K which is either success or failure right then we can have that C of this ek is equal to either 1 or 0 depending on what actually this elementary event is if it's success it's 1 if it's a failure it's 0 but then if we conduct n experiments one after another under exactly the same conditions what can we actually say about the probability well let's do it this way um, we will have the result of the first is 1 or 0. If I will add the result of the second, etc., and result of of the ends is n. So these are either zeros or ones, right? So number of ones is number of successes. Now, so this that's why if, if you will have this sum and divide it by n this would be a ratio of successful uh, of successes and that's supposed to go to p as n goes to infinity because that's the definition of the probability right so the sum of these values of our bernoulli random variable on the elementary events which are results of our experiments is actually the number of successes because in success it's equal to one in failure it's equal to zero so forget about zeros we don't really count them and number of ones is exactly the number of successes so and we know that number of successes divided by the number of experiments should go to p as the number of experiments goes to infinity so that's another way to view basically the bernoulli experiments and bernoulli trials um, and this probability which which is actually the probability of success
Well, um, we will devote some time in the future to basically have some characteristics of this uh, distribution, like its uh, expectation, its uh, uh, standard deviation, etc. But that's not part of this lecture. In this lecture, I just want to define certain concepts. And the first concept which I wanted to define, to define was a Bernoulli trial, Bernoulli random experiment, and a uh, random variable uh, which, which has a Bernoulli distribution, which means it's equal to 1 or 0 with probabilities of P and Q correspondingly. Okay, that's all about Bernoulli um, distribution as far as I wanted basically to, to, to define something about it. Now let's consider another one, which is very, very much re related to this. Also binary, which means it's related to experiments with only two results. But in this case, instead of making one experiment, we are making certain number of experiments simultaneously or sequential, doesn't really matter. Now, um, and what we are interested in is how many, if we conduct, let's say, n experiments, n Bernoulli experiments, and Bernoulli trials. Now, some of the results are successes, some of them are failures. And let's say we have k successes. What are possible values of k? Well, it can be zero, for instance, if all n trials resulted in failure. Or it can be one or two or three, and the maximum is obviously n when all n uh, ex experiments ended up in uh, success, right? So k can be considered as a random variable. So whenever we throw, let's say, n coins, and we count how many heads uh, are as a result of this experiment. It's a one experiment with n coins simultaneously. So the number of heads is a random variable because it, it's, it depends on the result of this experiment. Now, uh, there are different um, elementary events which are the result of our uh, n coins throwing, right? Um, for instance, all of them are success or, uh, or heads, or, or all of them are, are tails, or half of them uh, tails and half of them are um, uh, heads, etc. So these are all different elementary events. And on each elementary event, each result of the n Bernoulli trials, I can have a numerical function which is number of successes. This is exactly something which we call. Uh, binomial distribution. So k is a random variable, random variable with binomial distribution. So that's the definition. So we have defined a combined experiment which contains basically, which, is, which, is, which consists of n different Bernoulli experiments, Bernoulli trials. And the number of successes among them is our um, new random variable which uh, we define uh, in this particular way and its distribution we call binomial. Now, what's interesting is what exactly is this distribution? So, what is the probability um, of this random variable, uh, which I, I, I again I'm using um, the letter uh, C, to have the value of k? So, what is the probability of um, random variable which is equal to the number of successes to have a concrete value k which can be zero or one or two or n there are no more different values right so that's our task right now because to define the distribution of the random variable means that we have to 
know which value it takes and what's the probabilities of these values, right? In case of Bernoulli experiment and the random variable being basically the result of this experiment, uh, success or failure, and uh, its value 1 or 0, we know actually from the definition of the Bernoulli experiment that um, the probability of it's equal to 1 is p and the probability of it's equal to 0, uh, q which is 1 minus p. In this case, if we have exactly the same uh, Bernoulli trials but we um, simultaneously arrange n different trials, which each of them, are, uh, each of them is exactly the same as, as anything else, as, as all others, they all are independent and they all have exactly the same probability of success. But we conduct, instead of one experiment, n experiments simultaneously. And now we define our random variable as number of successes, right? So what is the distribution of this particular random variable? So for each k we have to calculate the probability. Now let's think about it. The easiest way is to calculate, for instance, the value of our random variable to be equal to zero. Now, what does it mean? It means that we have result of all these n Bernoulli trials, failure, 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 right? Now, they're all independent, and we know that the, uh, the probability of combination of the probabilities of n different events is the product of their uh, corresponding probability. So, the probability of our random variable, which is the number of successes, to be equal to zero, is the probability of the first experiment out of these n to be equal to, sorry, failure, which is q, and then the second one, etc., and, and the nth one. So, we have n different q's multiplied by each other, and this is q to the n degree. Now, what is the probability of our random variable to be equal to n? That means n successes. And this is p and p, etc., and p, which is p to the nth degree, right? So, we have already calculated in simple cases. Now, how about general case? Well, this is actually a very easy combinatorial problem which we have already solved before when we were addressing all these combinatorics problems. Okay, so here is what it is. So we are trying to calculate the probability of number of successes to be equal to k. Well, we have n experiments, right? Now, some of them are successes and some of them are failures. So, let's say these are successes, these are failures. Now, if I know that the number of successes is equal to k, first of all, I have to find out which experiments out of these n are successes and which are failures. Well, obviously, you have to have the number of combinations from n by k and this is basically the number of different ways our k successes are positioned within n experiments. It can be the first k or it can be the last k or it can be the first and then the third and the fourth and etc. So all the different combinations, how many times, how many different combinations of um, k uh, elements we can extract from the group of n. This how many, which is actually n factorial divided by k factorial and a minus k factorial, right? This is the formula. Um, so I hope you do remember the combinatorics because that was actually immediately before we started probabilities. Okay, so we know that this is the number of uh, different uh, choices of k successes to be chosen from n experiment. Now, once any particular uh, choice is made, so we marked k successes out of n experiment, concrete um, k successes. Now, what's the probability of this one? Well, if there are k successes on the particular places, their probability is p to the power of k, right? Because they have to success, success, success. And all others, 
all other n minus k supposed to be failures, right? And again, it's a combination, so we have to multiply it. So this is the probability of a concrete k successes and n minus k failures to be somehow, you know, after it's already positioned in, in this particular thing. So, what's the probability of our random variable to be equal to exactly k um, uh, number of successes? Well, that's this number, which shows how many times we can pick a concrete k successes out of n experiments, times this So once we have chosen that's what it is. So first number of combinations of k successes out of n and then for each particular combination this is the probability of k successes and this is the probability of n minus k failures which is exactly the same as 1 minus p n minus k since q is 1 minus p so this is the formula and as you understand it depends on two parameters so our distribution depends on two parameters number one how many trials participate in the whole thing this is n and what's the probability p of a success in one particular trial so, when we are talking about binomial distribution, and that's exactly what is the definition of the binomial distribution, we are talking about the distribution which depends on the number of trials and the probability of success in each individual trial. So, I just wanted to define these two different um, probabil pro probabilistic distributions. Bernoulli for a single um, experiment with two results and um, binomial distribution which is basically the combination. Now, what's interesting is that um, if you will define, now we have n Bernoulli trials, right? With each Bernoulli trial we can associate a Bernoulli uh, random variable which is equal to 1 or 0 with probability is p or q is equal to 1 minus p alright and i is an index of my experiment i is 1, 2, etc. n now now we are talking about uh, binomial distribution. Now, what is binomial distribution in this case? Let me use a different letter, uh, C for binomial distribution. It's actually sum of all these Bernoulli distribution. So, binomial distribution with n different trials is the sum of Bernoulli distribution of each individual trial added together because this is actually the number of successes right since xi is equal to either one for success or zero for failure then the total number of successes which is actually how binomial distribution defined right this is uh, this sum so this is a, a very important relationship between binomial distribution and, and Bernoulli distribution. So binomial is basically a sum of Bernoulli distributions. And that's kind of obvious because Bernoulli distribution is one trial, binomial distribution is the number of successes in n trials, and obviously uh, the sum of ones and zeros when success is one and failure is zero represents exactly what, what we wanted. All right, so this is something which I would consider to be a um, a nice definition of these two binary distributions, Bernoulli and, uh, and binomial.
Uh, again, obvious example is the coin tossing for Bernoulli distribution and and, to and coins tossing simultaneously or sequential doesn't matter tossing n coins and then count how many heads or how many tails we have. This is an example of binomial distribution. Now next lectures will be devoted to basically some um, uh, numerical characteristics like expectations, um, uh, deviations, etc. Et Alright, so that's it for today. Thanks very much. Don't forget that unisor.com contains all the comments, notes for this and all other lectures. And, uh, well, try to read it and um, I think it would be very beneficial actually if you will read it uh, after you um, watch the lecture. Um, that's it for today and thanks very much. Good luck! <laughs>